Hello. This is going to be, uh, you can call it the first in a series of little YouTube videos on low-hanging fruit to, you know, on your way to audio file sound. I do not have an audio file sound system, but um, I describe my system as grabbing all the low-hanging fruit one can on his or her way to true audiophile sound. Um, there are some popular uh, YouTube reviewers uh, for, for the audiophile community who have talked about sub-$1,200 uh, U.S. Uh, systems. And this, this is kind of the same uh, spirit or in the same vein. And what you're looking at now on, on your left side, you'll notice that these are not even the same gauge. This is a much, much flimsier gauge uh, speaker cable and this one isn't that great in of itself but this is like I call it lamp cord because my Norwegian teak 65 year old lamps um, it, it pretty much looks the same to me um, you know so if you're using this is not 60 year old lamp cord, but the same thing as lamp cord for your speakers. Uh, I don't think you need to spend three, four, five thousand dollars. And no, I am not exaggerating. True audiophile cables can easily get into the thousands of dollars. Like what you would pay for a decent integrated tube amp, people pay for their cables. And I guess when you're spending ten thousand dollars for an integrated tube amplifier, that makes sense, but I'm not going to spend $10,000 for an integrated two amp or $8,000 for a turntable. That's just not my budget. And even if it was, I, I'm, I'm not sure that you could ever get me to spend that much for a one single piece of audio equipment. Anyways, that's another debate for another time. But Amazon sells these uh, media bridge. Uh, this wants to focus sometime today. There we go. Uh, Gold-plated banana jack uh, cables. They're, they're soldered inside. Uh, I'll link in the description uh, to the actual products on Amazon, and you can read about them. But these are 12-gauge. Um, see if you can read on there. Uh, speaker cables that are shielded properly. They have the gold-plated banana jacks. They're soldered on the end versus just this twisted you know, mess of, of copper here. I mean, look at that. Not only is this a flimsy mamby-pamby gauge of wire, so you're arguably in, this is analog, right? This is, by, by the time it's going from the amplifier to your speakers, whether it's a tube amp or uh, a uh, transistorized amp, a, a solid state amp, you know, it's an analog signal. You're going to have, if you're looking to do a CD or high definition streaming from Amazon, I don't care. It's going to be an analog signal. So cables matter. It's not like an optical digital where it's a fiber optic signal and I don't care if you get a $10 or a $500 optical digital. I don't even know if they make a Toslink uh, SPDDIF uh, $500 cable, but if they did, it wouldn't matter. It's zeros and ones. Zeros and ones are zeros and ones. This is analog. So you're, you're, you arguably are not getting the same signal strength from this little mamby pamby and who knows, God knows how many connect, uh, wires have break. I've moved across the country since grad school, roughly 2,000 miles. I've moved three, uh, three times um, since, since moving out of my parents house um, then in the past 10 years and every time and I've moved speakers around the room too so I, the reason I'm going through all that long-windedness is to tell you how many times those have been disconnected and connected so unlike these banana jacks that I mean if you disconnect these enough to wear the gold plating off I mean you must be like a professional audio person or something like that um, but for a home setup where you're basically going to connect those and leave them, uh, unless you move, 
I mean, and even like a, I don't know, military family or somebody that has to move around a lot or somebody that's on a traveling sales kind of a gig and they move from region to region. I don't know. I'm trying to think of a reason you would move a lot. But this gold-plated uh, connector on here is going to be far more durable even if you move once a year and disconnect your speakers once a year or if you're a professional audio reviewer and always disconnecting and connecting than these twisted bare copper um, this is also uh, deoxygenated you know it's oxygen free copper do I have a multimeter hooked up and can I tell you the difference between oxygenated and probably the cheapest kind of copper and this isn't even, I don't even know if that's copper. That's like, looks like, uh, not copper. So, while I don't want to spend multiple thousands of dollars on cable, this one is shorter because my speaker for the left channel is closer to the receiver than the other one. And why would you want any longer, um, Think about an extension cord where your extension cord can only be so long before they start listing warnings like warning only so much of a load on this extension cord for this much length. You know, you start to get to where you have to get find a near an outlet nearer to what you're using the extension cord for and get a shorter extension cord if you're going to run a high uh, draw uh, appliance or something off of that extension cord. It's kind of the same thing where you want the shortest one of these and therefore you get the least amount of a signal loss possible. So my other speaker is farther away. I got the 25 foot one. This is the 12 foot one. That's why they look different, but they're the same cable though. So I'm going to hook these up and afterwards I'm going to kind of narrate and, and talk about the differences I hear in my music. I'm going to use the same uh, Amazon uh, HD audio file uh, directly uh, shot with an optical digital signal from my Surface Book into the 24-bit uh, DAC in my uh, HK3490 receiver going to my... Uh, these are Polk Audio Monitor 7Bs that I'll go into... Um, my audio rig and the Amazon HD service, which I, I think is excellent, by the way. I just recently signed up and discovered that. Um, but I'll, I'll go into that. that. That'll be separate videos. But um, I'm excited because I think, I don't know why, this is going to be one of those things. I can tell you physically looking at these right now that this is going to be one of those things where I was stupid for not having done them before. It's like, why, why would you ever spend a, spend a dime on anything I mean, I have a Techniques turntable from the early to mid 80s that's direct drive. It's not the most expensive one, but it's not the cheapest either. And I upgraded to a Audio-Technica uh, moving coil cartridge. I have a Denon uh, step-up transformer, and I uh, got some high, you know, similar to these, um, high quality, I think they were Radio Shack uh, house brand uh, really heavy gauge, gold-plated uh, connectors. I took my record, my turntable apart, and I actually soldered in those higher quality Radio Shack RCA cables, which is good. It's, it's a smart idea. Those the, the little mamby pamby things that are hooked up to the Techniques uh, turntable from the factory weren't great. But my point is, I did that before I did this. I don't know why, again, this is going to be a thing where it's like, boy, why didn't you do that years ago? So uh, here it goes, and uh, I'll be back on once I've kind of sampled the uh, music, and I, I'm predicting my speakers were missing a lot of the amplifier's output because of my... I was rummaging around in the drawer, and I just found this trash heap stuff right here when I could have had this. By the way, less than 50 bucks, Amazon. And after listening to uh, a few tracks on Amazon HD, um, in fact, let me uh, let me show you my uh, my setup here. Um, I've just got my Surface Book playing um, the uh, Amazon app. 
and um, this is uh, I play blue and green uh, it's at uh, 24 bit um, 96 kilohertz uh, flack um, and that's going right into my uh, Harman Kardon HK3490 uh, DAC um, and uh, it's, I have a 24-bit DAC there and I played also if we go back to um, do 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 recent um, played so um, every day I have the blues uh, that's an HD so that's a 16-bit that's the same as like a CD quality which isn't bad but and then watch out for Lucy uh, Eric Clapton um, that's um, that's uh, uh, an ultra HD uh, track just like the uh, Miles Davis so uh, two that are in the uh, ultra HD uh, format and uh, one that was just in the HD uh, basically CD quality um, like my technique CD changer uh, shooting uh, the optical digital signal into the DAC uh, that's a 16-bit still not bad it's not quite as good um, really in my opinion to get to the vinyl where you can actually really compete with vinyl and you start saying well what's the point of all the vinyl you know uh, going through all the vinyl this is going to be a completely different video for me because um, I've recently got into this uh, ultra high definition streaming and being a long time vinyl fan uh, it, it really is making me scratch my head about uh, my future with vinyl. No, I'm not going to get rid of my records but it I might think before buying another uh, audio file release of a, a recording or something but anyway so that's my source material that's my setup and point being that these just as I suspected, I mean, look at them. I mean, that's like you would find in a uh, garbage uh, can somewhere. And honestly, the highs, my uh, Polk uh, Monitor 7Bs, um, and especially since I've done the, the, the crossover capacitors and resistors with the audio file grade, you know, replacing the basically 40-year-old hardware technology with the newest audio file grade capacitors hand matched uh, in, in, you know, in pairs um, by the vendor. Um, the highs were, were clear before they were strong. Um, you know, they, they, they came out uh, uh, pretty well. Um, no complaints about the highs um, before, but with these, um, the, the biggest difference was that these, with the low frequency, and in particular, I'm going to show you, uh, I'll talk about my Polk Monitor 7B speakers, and they're kind of a weird thing in that they have a passive uh, uh, radiator style woofer. They don't have a real driven subwoofer. There is no electronic coil that has an electric signal shooting through it and causing a voice coil to, to, to make a speaker move. It is a pure mechanical low frequency uh, movement of air that causes this passive radiator to move and they will give you bass but I felt like it, my ears felt like that these were robbing the signal of energy that required me to crank the volume more because I used it at uh, you know my my uh, Harman Kardon is is graded in um, in uh, dB here and uh, decibels and I had it at 15 negative 15 dB before and after. So I, I tried to make this as scientific and, 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 you know, control, you know, the variables that I could. So this would be a like versus like. And at that same volume level, you know, I, I found these, these cables. I mean, look, I mean, you, this is like paper thin. 
and this isn't even, both of these aren't even copper. I mean, and, and they're the different gauge. You can't tell me that there, these didn't have something to do with that. I mean, I, I, the only thing I changed is these, are, are these, and I don't have to crank the volume up to get the same level of bass. And the bass was clearer, and and it was it was it was it was deeper, it was clearer, and and it was it was louder. So I'm looking forward to listening more. I'm gonna try some vinyl uh, this evening. But I'm predicting similar results. Um, you know, I, I, looking at these, just looking at them, I don't understand how. And again, this is a very long-winded way of saying that low-hanging fruit. Fifty bucks and change from Amazon to my door, and you know, it made a not as far as saying a night and day difference, but. These are low-hanging fruits. You know, I would have hated to spend money on speakers uh, and, and get, you know, mediocre results from spending thousands of speaker on speakers when I was hooking them up with these cables. So, do I need to spend $6,000 on cables? No. But I think 50 bucks on Amazon was well worth it. And um, the capacitor and resistor upgrades... And I paid extra to have them hand matched. That means the output values, way to the right of the decimal point, were 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 they were they actually tested the the resistors and capacitors with uh, electrical measuring equipment and hand picked ones that matched within a certain range beyond the decimal point, so that the left speaker and the right speaker basically have the same exact resistor and the same exact capacitor, because even you know two exact rated make and model capacitors or two exact r related, uh, rated make and model resistors can have different, you know, slightly different, you know, if the manufacturing tolerances weren't great, which a lot of these aren't, um, but that cost $100. So let's say $50 for these, $100 for, for re-soldering my, uh, for redoing my uh, speaker crossovers and I was looking at speakers and or I was, you know, edging back and forth between speakers or tube equipment, three or four thousand dollar investment in my system. And now I'm scratching my head about spending any more money at all. I will probably eventually do something like that. But I mean, for heaven's sakes, if I can improve my system this much with just 150 call it 160 dollars if you want to include some kind of shipping which i don't think i paid much for shipping for either i mean my goodness i mean if that isn't low-hanging fruit in a night and day difference um i don't know what is all right see you guys next time